the Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministry on this second Sunday after Pentecost or St. Barnabas Feast Day. Uh, it's a joy to have you join us this morning and here are the announcements for today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
praise you, O God, for the life of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own well-being, but the well-being of your church, gave generously of his life and possessions for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. Grant that we may follow his example by our actions to give you glory, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the fifth chapter of Hosea. I will return again to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face, and in their distress earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. He is going out as sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers as the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Therefore I have honed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 50. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am God, your God. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I will take no bull calf from your stalls, nor he goats out of your pens. For all the beasts of the forest are mine, the herds and their thousands upon the hills. I know every bird in the sky and the creatures of the fields are in my sight. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall honor me. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Romans. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. But where there is no law, there is no transgressions. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring 
not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations, as he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith, his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And while he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. For she, had, for she said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute player and the crowd making a com commotion, he said, go away for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, but when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went through all that district. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad you came to join us this morning. Uh, today is a very special day in the RLCM. Last week, we got to celebrate um, two baptisms that happened at Christ Lutheran Church. And this week, we're going to be celebrating two confirmations at Christ Group Lutheran Church. Now, these two events, baptism and confirmation, go hand in hand together. Because in our baptism, more often than not, if we're baptized as a baby, our parents are standing there uh, before God and the whole congregation professing a faith for us as we are baptized. And then in confirmation, we come up before the congregation after having learned many important things, such as the Lord's Prayer, the Ten Commandments, the, the creeds, and the sacraments. And we come before the congregation and we affirm the faith that we were baptized into. Now, faith is such an important thing. As we heard uh, throughout all the lessons this morning, we heard in Romans, Paul talk about how faith is so important to us. And then in the gospel lesson, we heard about two people who were healed, one who uh, had an issue with uh, blood and, and they went and they had the faith knowing that if they just touched the hem of Jesus's garment, they would be made well. And so this woman goes up and just barely touches the hem of Jesus's garment and she was made well. And Jesus even says, your faith has made you well. And then there's a ruler who goes to Jesus, kneels before him and is uh, saying, Lord, my daughter has died, but I know if you go, she will be made well. A ruler professing faith, knowing that Jesus would heal their daughter. And sure enough, that's what happened. 
Jesus goes and is wondering why all the mourners are there and says, do not mourn for she is sleeping. And she awakes. Faith is so important in our life uh, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And so on this day, as we celebrate these two, uh, these two young adults who are standing before the church, professing their faith, affirming their faith in baptism for the very first time. Let us also remember how important faith is for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you give us faith through the gift of holy baptism and through the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us to strengthen our faith as we go out and proclaim your kingdom through all the world. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Last week, we were able to celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday, where we were able to take a moment and appreciate the doctrine or the teaching of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our gospel reading for last week was the Great Commission, which is something that we have all probably heard, especially those of us in the NALC, for that has been the focus of our denomination for many years, to go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And last week in my sermon, I talked about how in this great commission, Jesus is bringing the church back to the basics. This verse brings us to the fundamentals of how do we go and make disciples? For we hear Jesus say to go and make disciples of all nations. And he says to baptize, teach and serve. And so how do we fulfill this great commission? We baptize, we teach and we serve. But this morning, we get to hear the call of St. Matthew. It's a very short reading of only five verses, but it's packed with significance as it shows us the mission of Jesus Christ. Jesus's mission is packed with his mercy and grace. And through this call of Matthew, we too can learn aspects of our own call in discipleship. In fact, last Sunday, we almost started a mini series on discipleship as we will be looking at aspects of discipleship from Jesus and Paul as we go in about the next month or so. But when it comes to Matthew, really, even though he's got a wonderful name, in my opinion, uh, we don't know too much about him. In fact, besides this call story that we heard this morning, the only other time that he's mentioned in the Bible is when we hear him being included in the list of names of the disciples. But the one thing that we do know about him was that he was a tax collector who worked in a tax booth. Now, tax collectors were hated among the Jewish people because they were traitors. Tax collectors worked for the Roman government, and uh, the Romans liked to hire local people who knew the area, knew the roads, and knew the people. So just right off the bat, we can see why they were hated so much. The Jews hated the Romans because they wanted their independence. And then to make matters worse, the way that the tax collectors would make money is they would charge a tax to everyone who came into town with produce or some other goods to sell in town. This tax would then get passed on to the consumer as the price of food or goods would be inflated. If that was not bad enough, the way tax collectors made money is they would demand a higher tax from the people than what they had to prepay to the Roman government earlier. They had to pad their own pockets, which led many tax collectors to greed and corruption. Jewish tax collectors were despised even more than Roman tax collectors because many considered them to be committing acts of treason against God. And rabbis often included tax collectors with robbers. And so knowing how despised these tax collectors are, what does Jesus do? He goes to Matthew and he says, follow me. Matthew, follow me. Two words filled with divine power from the Holy Spirit and the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ compelled Matthew to stand up and follow Jesus. In Luke, we hear that Matthew left everything and followed Jesus. Matthew left everything. He left behind his love and worship of money and followed Jesus. You cannot serve two masters. Sometimes the call of Jesus, which we all have received, involves us to separate from something or maybe even someone. As we hear Jesus say in the Gospel of St. Matthew, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. 
You cannot serve God and money. As this is written in the Gospel of St. Matthew, it rings especially true for Matthew that he left behind his love of money to follow Jesus. You know, if we were to notice, uh, I think it's important to notice who is the treasurer for Jesus and the disciples. It's Judas. It was not the former tax collector who we know is good with money, but instead it's Judas. Matthew left behind that life and is fully following Jesus. And Jesus is calling us to follow him and leave behind all the other masters and gods that we like to hold on to and worship and leave them behind and follow him. But Jesus is doing something important here. He called someone who was a tax collector. He calls someone from this terrible occupation to demonstrate that no one, no one is beyond the realms of redemption. Jesus is breaking down any barriers that the Pharisees or rabbis have put in place. He is calling those who thought that they were beyond redemption. We don't need to have a spiritual qualification to be called by Jesus to be his disciple. Uh, in the TV series, The Chosen, uh, they have an awesome demonstration of this point of what Jesus is doing. Because when they depict this call of Matthew, uh, Jesus calls Matthew and Peter seems very upset that Jesus is doing this. And finally, Jesus turns to Peter and says, get used to different. Get used to different. Jesus is turning things upside down. He comes to where we are. He comes to the sinful traps that we find a way to put ourselves in and calls out to us to follow him. Jesus doesn't look around to find the right people, but instead he calls people from all over. It doesn't matter where we find ourselves in in life, where we think, whether we think we're on the straight and narrow, we're off the beaten path or absolutely nowhere near the path at all. Jesus still comes to us and says, follow me, be my disciple." There is no sin, nothing that we can do in this world that is too great that it cannot be forgiven by Jesus Christ. And so Jesus further demonstrates his point by doing the unfathomable in the eyes of the Pharisees. He ate with tax collectors and sinners. Oh, can you believe it? Jesus is eating with a bunch of good old dirty rotten sinners. But wait a minute. Isn't that every single person in the world except for Jesus? Every single person in this world except for Jesus Christ is a sinner. So who are the Pharisees talking about? As Chad Bird puts it, they are the riffraff of the town. Now, if you're raised on Disney movies like me, my mind went directly to the movie Aladdin. But this riffraff, these sinners... They are the outcasts, the unsavory types who live outside of respected society. And so when we put that definition to it, I guess Aladdin would be classified as riffraff uh, to the Pharisees. But the fact that Jesus was eating and sharing table fellowship with tax collectors and riffraff meant that he was not just paying lip service to his mercy and grace, but he was making it real through his words and actions. He embraces the ill, the wounded, the outcasts, tax collectors, and all the riffraff that the world could throw at him. Jesus is knocking down any wall where people believe there are the righteous and the unrighteous, the clean and the unclean. And Jesus knocks down these walls and says, come to me and find rest. And this is what is important for us. Jesus is tearing down these walls. But when Jesus calls out and says, follow me, we still need to follow him. Matthew is working on helping his friends as they have this dinner. He brings them into an encounter with Jesus. He helps to point his friends to the man who just called him and said, Matthew, follow me. So what does this look like for us today? It could be inviting someone to, to church asking if someone needs help, or even just being a friend and helping to point out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, as you can imagine, the Pharisees, they were not happy that Jesus was doing this. And so Jesus says to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, 
But those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. You know, there's this idea throughout the Bible uh, of people being sick and in need of healing and them going to God. We see this all throughout the Old Testament. Uh, actually, in our Old Testament reading from Hosea, we can hear, Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn us, that he may heal us. He has struck us down, and he will bind us up. We hear about the Israelites being hurt, injured, and sick throughout the Old Testament. They needed healing, and when they realized that they needed healing, they went to God for that healing. And we, too, at times find ourselves in need of a physician to heal us and make us whole. And we can find that healing in the great physician. We find it solely in Jesus Christ. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees. He actually quotes Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, which says, For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. To uh, try and put this in a little bit more layman's term, he's, Jesus is pretty much telling the Pharisees, Look, I came not as the cheering squad for some non-existent righteous team, but as the doctor for the ill, the wounded, the dying. What I want is to show mercy to them, as I want people also to show mercy to one another. For without mercy, all those sacrifices that you have made where you pour gallons of animals' blood shed on top of the altar mean absolutely nothing. Because I came to show mercy, to show the heart of the Father. I came to call sinners to myself, sinners like Matthew and other tax collectors. And yes, even you, O Pharisees, that in me you all might be healed. The mission of the Messiah is one of healing. We are all in need of healing. And Jesus calls us where we're at. We are ill, we are sick, we are dying and we are wounded. And Jesus comes to us. And calls us to himself. The great physician driven by mercy and the love of God that does not give up until he finds us and brings us home and gives us healing. And he does this for us every time that we come to his altar and partake in the most precious body and blood of Jesus Christ. He does this for us when we are healed of our sickness. He does this when we have a resolution to a problem. He does this every time something good happens to us. This morning, we celebrate the call of Matthew and the call that each of us receive. We all have been called as disciples of Jesus Christ. And just like Matthew, we have a story to tell. Throughout the summer, we're going to be hearing Matthew's story as it was recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew. Um, this is Matthew's testimony of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we can hear uh, St. John Chrysostom. He said, Matthew wrote this gospel when the believers in Christ from the Jews had approached him and asked that he would send them in writing what he had taught them by word of mouth, that it might be preserved. And so Matthew, through the help of the Holy Spirit, shared his encounter and teaching of Jesus Christ. For us as disciples of Jesus Christ, we too have a testimony to share with others. We know that there are people who are sick in the world and are in need of the healing power of Jesus Christ. And so we are called to go out and share that testimony to others where we can help point them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so before I end this uh, sermon, I want to share a story about two golfers. Uh, we're going to call one of them Joe and the other one Max. And so Joe and Max love golfing on Saturday morning. One Saturday, Max loved the round of golf so much that he asked Joe, hey, Joe, this was so much fun. Do you want to do it tomorrow? And Joe looked at him and said, no, I, I can't do it. I've got church in the morning. Next Sunday, as they, or next Saturday, as they're nearing the 18th hole, Max says, man, Joe, I just love playing golf today. I, I have had so much fun. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Let's do it again tomorrow. And Joe said, Max, I can't do it. I've got church tomorrow. This goes on for 30 years. 30 years, every time as they approach the 18th hole, Max asks to play the next day on Sunday. And Joe keeps saying, no, he has to go to church. Finally, Joe's temper got the best of him. And he said, Max, for 30 years, I've told you that I have church in the morning. Why do you keep asking me to play on Sunday morning? 
And Max looks Joe dead in the face and he says, for 30 years, I've been asking you to play golf on Sunday. And not once have you ever invited me to church. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, you have created us, blessed us, and forgiven us. You send us to share your forgiveness with fellow sinners. Help us to do that eagerly and well. Give us strength to find our joy and purpose in life by loving you with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shape your church into the image of Jesus. Make it a place of steadfast love and righteousness. Make it a place of forgiveness, hope, and praise. Make it a place of truth and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we are Christians in our own community or we go into other cultures to share the gospel, there will always be people who stop their ears and refuse the good news. Strengthen your persecuted people with your Holy Spirit. Give them the fullness of joy that Jesus promised because he has overcome the world. Help them to share that joy and the hope that is within them, even with their enemies, so that in Christ they may be reconciled. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this congregation of pa in pathways of faithful worship, loving service, and wise words. Let everything we say and do lead even one other precious soul a step closer to Jesus. We pray for the North American Lutheran Church, area congregations, and stay for Mount Union Lutheran Church of Shalakta, and for the Reverend Joystick Swires and Reverend Matthew Vadalaire. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all students, especially graduates, as they complete another year of school. Thank you for good teachers, aides, and coaches. Give all of us the joy of learning a new skill and increasing our wisdom and knowledge, whether in the classroom, on the job, or in the school of hard knocks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, please give wisdom, integrity, and common sense to everyone in positions of authority in our country and around the world. Teach them rightly to use the authority and power entrusted to them, and help all of us to be good neighbors, citizens, and stewards of your good creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect and guide all whose work is difficult or dangerous, especially those who protect us from harm. They need your good gift of courage, competency, and dedication, and so do we. Help us to honor their work and to not make it any harder than it already is through needless fear, foolishness, or malice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son healed everyone who called upon him for aid. We pray, therefore, on behalf of everyone who suffers in body, mind, or spirit, including all those who name before you, either silently or aloud. Restore them to health and strengthen their faith in you, the God whose promises have their yes in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who have gone before us, who shaped our faith and our lives, whom we loved and who now rest in your embrace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so our lives may be a blessing to others and lead us into your house of many rooms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 